Yeah, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce to you uh, Julian Ma. Um, we just um, had a very successful stint at the uh, Sydney Contemporary Art Fair, where we also featured a solo room with, with Julian's work, which was sold. Um, not that that's um, we talk about involved in talking about money, but, um, but it's nice when um, you know, uh, we have people respond to, to this new direction of work that Julian is doing because, um, you know, uh, any change of direction is, is symbolic of courage and also the arts challenging themselves and, um, and pushing their ideas and medium, um, you know, further, which is, um, you know, parallels our personal growth um, as much as our creative. And, um, you know, I'm really proud of where Julian's going. Um, you know, Julian's been with me for a few years now, and and to see how this work, you know, really sort of, um, I suppose, to me, um, are, they're very evocative works. You know, uh, they they have a sense to me by which they transport me, and um, and the, the whole thing is about um, the idea that the, the inner geometry of nature. Um, we, we look at nature and we see it as a very free space. But within nature and the mechanism of how molecules and how that was to do, you know, you had to be bringing it up, but he, Julian was trained as a doctor, but, but, but perhaps the idea that how when we look closely um, at the molecular structure of what all things are made up of, it's also the same sort of structure we see when we look into the universe. and. Um, so but anyway, to me, I find it really interesting how Julian has married the idea of the, um, the monochrome space, or the, the, space, the spaces that, um, that appear to be monochrome, but are actually soft, soft interludes between the landscape and juxtapose that sense of the geometry that's not just within the landscape itself, but the idea of um, psychological space and the idea of how we place our soul next to something that, that um, you know, I suppose represents a vision of escape. Um, anyway, I don't really want to say much more other than the fact that I'm extremely proud to, to be having this show and, um, and extremely proud to introduce you to Julian who will elaborate on what I've said and I'm sure we'll add, we'll add a lot more. So, Julian. <coughs> Thanks, Tim. Yeah. Great intro. Yeah. Um, this is going to be pretty casual, so feel free to interrupt at any point um, throughout the saga. Um, it's much better in conversation mm. rather than a monologue for me about what I think this work's about. Yeah. Uh, but I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land, especially the Tasmanian um, Aboriginal community from where this series was painted from, outside Brown Bishino. Um, not that this work's political, but I think as a white male painter um, painting the Australian landscape, it's hard not to acknowledge your place in a changing history in terms of the Australian landscape. Um, I shied away from it for one of those, for that reason um, for many years and painted um, more still lives and things. I just, I just didn't know what I wanted to say and how I wanted to say it about um, how I felt about my place and my role and my connection um, to our country. I think as I've got older and um, had a kid and I've started thinking more about my role in that dialogue and I feel a lot more comfortable now in painting um, Stop, stop the land that, is, that I'm in love with, that is me as well. And I think that's a very interesting thing for where we're going to go and the younger generations coming through, that's going to become more and more of an important dialogue between pain and landscape um, and, uh, and its history. That being said, um, they're more personal works than, um, than didactic in that sense. Um, they, they are sort of a, something I've been doing for the last three years and just going deeper and deeper into painting. Even though the motif is landscape, they've ended up being a lot more personal reflections of, I think, my, my state of mind. Um, I think these colour fields have been a big breakthrough um, in terms of a dialogue between figurative and colour field. Mm -hmm. And I find that they're, that I'm saying a bit of poetry that I didn't have a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I think that's come through a bit more ambiguity and more metaphor. Um, mm -hmm. This is an unashamedly romantic series I think beauty can be the sharpest tool in the box, and it does its very nice entry point into thinking about a lot of things, 
not just land, but also space and time. Um, and I think this all came about when I had a, had a baby, and I've got another one on the way, and it's an ultra romantic time in life, but I've just I've embraced that fully and helped that influence my work in a way that I've never done before. I should, probably should have had kids about 20 years ago. I <laughs> um, would like to fast forward to this point. You, you, you talk about uh, romant romanticism. Um, romanticism, as we know, is, is really an 18th century movement by which you know we had um, a great um, movement happened in Europe, you know, with um, Schopenhauer and uh, Nietzsche and all sorts of uh, Walter Scott, where um, no longer did we need religious motives to express the power of God, you know, within within nature. Um, you know, we had um, composers like uh, Schumann and Schubert talk with you through Lino. Uh, talk about how the journey of the individual through the landscape. And that you don't need crosses or biblical um, mythology to express the power of spirituality um, in, in the world. The power of, of spirituality, whether we want to call them God or Allah or whatever, um, can be felt through just looking and feeling the landscape. Is that something that you yeah, trying definitely. to achieve through this work. Definitely, I mean that's that's a, yeah. that's a, it's a huge. Um, yeah. It's quite nice to paint something that is that big. Yeah, or the dream time, I should say. Everything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, someone asked me kind of what's it about, and my answer in my head is always people trying to paint everything. Like, yeah. Me plus something greater than me. Mm. Um, my past and future as well, and then also trying to be in the moment. These paintings are painted very quickly, mm. and so they're a snapshot. But I feel. It's, it's an obviously an impossible undertaking, but it is a nice romantic thing to go into a painting and go, like, I don't quite know what's going to happen, but I want to paint something huge. And, mm -hmm. and to think about those giant forces that are way bigger than me. The moon plays a bit of a, um, a role in this show as a, as a sort of steady mm -hmm. orb that's mm -hmm. constantly looking down and it's affecting us yeah. um, and, and pulling us in ways we don't know. I like that. It was the same moon that looked down on us thousands of years ago. No one was quietly observing. Um, I found a very powerful motif to, to as a starting point for a lot of these works. Mm. Um, a lot of them I had plans of bringing the moon in, but I didn't need it. Halfway through, I'm not bringing it in. Karen, who I share a studio with, very rarely do, do my studio um, friends give any input. They did come in one day and I painted a colour field. Everyone signed it. Kai Maestri, Karen Black, <laughs> everyone went, Jules, don't touch this painting, it's finished. And all it was was my first layer for a colour field. And I, would, I, would you agree that it's um, harder to know when to stop as it is to begin? It's impossible. I mixed up the colours yeah. straight away and put a glaze yeah. over it yeah. um, because I didn't want to be told that it was finished. But they were right. And then the next one I did, I left, I left a few things out. And um, it's probably one of the best paintings I did um, out of the Sydney Contemporary Show, which was just a pink colour field that was entitled a self portrait. Mm. And it's kind of quite excited about going down maybe that pathway in the future um, in terms of dialogue. But that's when you can be, I think, who you're next to and, who, and who's looking after you and who you speak to about your work. You can definitely help you um, jump off the cliff a little bit better. If you had asked me 10 years ago, would I paint a colour field? Probably, I would have gone away. I can't see myself doing that. I want to mm. I want to paint something I see. I want to show people how well I can paint. Because these are a lot more, I think, I've got a lot more confidence. Well, your early, your early work was extremely um, representational. Um, almost sort of photo real. Um, we now see a Julian Marr who is able to develop what I would call a tache. You know, you, you're able to um, create the Zen mark. You know, you've got that gestural capacity, which is the antithesis of really where your early work, work, work was. You know, um, you know, you work with the brush now in a way that I never, ever expected you to be, to be able to do. Yeah. Um, you know, I don't draw anything, I never draw anything yeah. anymore. Well, I used to always sketch yeah. up before I started, but then I've got these borders and yeah. lines, and I, there's no room for change. And painting landscapes mm. was the breakthrough because they're essentially abstracts. Yeah. When you, when, if you strip away what your entry point into the image, they are, mm. you know, most of these are abstract paintings. And yeah. so there's that freedom to push paint around and sphere yeah. and fades and spin it upside down and portrait. You can do whatever you want when you're painting yeah. an abstract. So I'm, I haven't gone fully abstract, but I'm push, I feel like I'm pushing. I'm, more, I'm a lot more comfortable well, in that space. Of, um, yeah, I mean, you, you call you use the word abstract, but to me, I call I call it feeling. Yeah, me too as well. You know, that's how I'm thinking yeah. about. It. I mean, yeah. 
True painting is about the thinking side of the brain getting in touch with the feeling side of the brain. And a lot of your early work was the thinking aspect of the relationship of objects and almost sort of very yogi in regard to the place with of objects and their relationship with each other. These works are more to do with the idea of letting yourself go mm -hmm. and, and allowing the, the source of what you're in front of or what you feel from nature come through. Um, yeah, so I mean, um, yeah, when, was the when was the turning point when you suddenly felt that you could just use the brush in a way that it's almost like you, you, you handle them oil now almost or you're, you're, you're medium like um, like watercolour now. Yeah. yeah. The turning point was three years ago when I did a residency and I just something I just something clicked in me and I drove back to Sydney after being in this national park for a month and went on changing and I reached an end point also with what I was doing. Um, so I was in a I was sort of in a I didn't know where I wanted to go and I just had made a decision I'm gonna change up change up everything it's time to jump. Yeah. Um, I'm surrounded by people that paint in that way as well, which helps. Yeah. And you watch you watch someone else um, take a run up before they jump off the cliff yeah. and take huge risks and huge courage yeah. when they paint. And I just suddenly went, oh, what am I? Um, if, you, if you try and hold on too tightly to a painting, you strangle it. Mm. And if it's too linear, just because you want to make it have a nice outcome, mm. there's no life in it. Mm. And so I've, it took many years for me to finally start letting go. And I've got to make bad paintings to make the magic ones. Yeah. And all that kind of. Um, philosophy of painting that only mm. comes through. Mm. Um, Thank a, a lot of paintings. So, so the idea of bringing in, say, the, the, the monochrome aspects, or they're not monochromes in, in a sense, but they're, 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 you know, they're almost like um, uh, ways in which you use shadow and light to, to contrast the landscape. Um, you know, how, how, I mean, what leads you to, you know, suddenly. I mean, they work in a way that um, you know these these paintings are now. Um, you know, I talked about the ge geometry before. Um, these paintings are almost like providing rest, rest, restful places for uh, areas of interest. Um, you know, what are those areas that are now basically you know simple just spa uh, spaces of colour? They are space. I think yeah. that's that's all they are. But like, there's so much in that. Um, out, out of my studio window. I can just see, I look north and there's just plain sky. Yeah. And you know, while I was painting this, we're getting these um, winter sunsets that are just these amazing fades. And every minute, the colours are slightly changing. Yeah. And I think just turning, having that behind me while I'm painting yeah. has been in my um, sort of subconscious. Yeah. And there's enough, there's enough there within that change in time, change in space that um, mm. I, got, I like using that as an entry point to sort of. Mm. How I'm feeling on the day, or what I'm trying to make someone feel when they look at my paintings. But I think this the technique that I'm using now is kind of it's like some of the paintings are actually like that. This is a good example. This one here on the right hand side, that's a smear. Mm -hmm. So I'm using oil and thinning it down, and then I've got an hour or two to, to big brushes to pull it all off. Yeah. So they're very reductive in terms of a process rather than adding. Mm -hmm. So I start and then pull off, pull off, pull off. Mm -hmm. And I think that the paintings next to it are. Um, I see them as almost a small section of that painting, a big sort of that macro micro, uh, yeah. that in and out kind of uh, yeah. dialogue, which is really nice. Yeah. And I, I see them as feel, I paint, I see them as self portraits and as feelings. Yeah. And then you, you sandwich that next to a more um, realistic landscape, and then you've got that mm. you already. Uh, it's a really, there's something, something magic happening with, with these ones. Yeah. In, in, in the other room, you've got smaller works. You know, which we've lit in a way by which they almost sort of look like um, luminous um, images in a way. Um, are you trying to say something different in that room than say what they're trying to say? I had a vision for that room as my night room. Yeah. It's kind of, I kind of like these shows end up in a lot about night. And I wanted to have, mm. have dark and how you see differently at night. Um, I find the nighttime very romantic, especially when you're out in nature. Mm. Um, and yeah, I just wanted, I wanted all those, I just wanted to be little moments and, mm. and, 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 and silence as well. I think that room for me is very calming. Mm. Um, there's not these, you, you don't have the bright lights of the gallery. No. And no one can necessarily see you while you're in. It's kind of a nice space to be in. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I think I wanted that, for, uh, that was more about creating the feeling for those yeah. works to exist in. Yeah. Uh, which has worked really well in that room. Mm. Um, 
these landscapes are obviously there, there's the element of sea and sea and land and what have you. Um, is there a specific area that um, I mean, you talked about Tasmania. Tasmania ended up in our planned adventure planning a few years ago and mm -hmm. spent some time down there. Yeah. Um, and the landscape there is very different to what we have on the East Coast. Yeah. And for me, it was more just an accept it's very accessible to very wild yeah. uh, national parks with really good um, shapes to paint, essentially. So I went down there just to really get reference yeah. and to find that isolation on you know, the East Coast to Australia's heart. Yeah. Um, whereas Tasman's just a wealth of it's amazing landscape. So yeah. I'm not sure where I'm going to go next. I could go Central Desert or Northern Territory or something. <coughs> yeah. I'm not trying to think about that yet. But yeah. Tassie was a really nice um, uh, uh, inspiration for me. And the light's slightly different down there as well. It is darker. Yeah, well, there's, some, there's, a, there's a kind of Von Gerard um, aspect to these because, I mean, Von Gerard was taught by Casper David Friedrich. Who was one of the leading master romantic painters at the time, and um, there's a sort of a magnificence of the landscape that you're creating in these, um, you know, the, the, the really, you know, we're quite infinitesimal you know, compared to what we're looking at. Um, I mean, are you, are you through these works, um, you know, trying to say something about um, that? Um, you know, where do where, I mean, where, where do we where do we sit with this landscape in regard to um, are there any ecological or I mean, apart from spiritual? Are there, what 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 is it that you are trying to convey to the viewer um, with this work? Ultimately, in these works, I don't have a I don't have an easy answer for that. Yeah, but it, I think the bottom line would be my place in that landscape. Yeah, yeah. and right. my place. Sort of the humans, humanity, what we're doing in the environment, what yeah. we've done to our, our past. Yeah. Um, there's, it's, that's, I, I kind of don't want to put a figure in it. I want, it's about us looking at the landscape mm. and starting a um, narrative of, mm. um, I don't know. I'm, that's a very hard question. I don't really, to be honest, I don't really know necessarily what my painting's going to say or what it's going to be when I started. Mm. Um, Kind of, I've got a lot better at letting the painting tell me what to do, mm. um, and so I'm not trying to. I don't have. A, I'm not trying to actually say anything in particular. Mm. I'm kind of, um, it's more about language of paint. Yeah. And, and so really, really, the artist's position is really. Um, they're not. Really, dialogue doesn't do justice to what really is what you're trying to achieve here. Yes, yeah, there's something concrete. It's not. You've lost yeah. the poetry. Because yeah. as soon as you tell someone what you think, yeah. you're not going to want to think it. Yeah. So it's a, it's a, so I feel like, and it's a bit of, it's a nice cop out for us. So I'm here yeah. to ask the questions, not answer them. Yeah. Well, I um, feel that's kind of Rothko esque aspect to some of these works. Yeah. The answer, yeah. the answer lies in yeah. the painting, not in what I say about the painting. Yeah. Uh, I feel yeah. like that's, that may sound like a huge cop out, but I do feel yeah. like maybe we'll talk a lot better about yeah. what it's trying to say than what I wanted to say, if that makes well, any sense. Well, yeah, absolutely. Well, um, is there anything more you, you really want to add? Um, any questions? Are there any questions that anyone would like to ask? Where is that? It's not really a question, but when you were talking before about the Indigenous connection to the land, how it's intrinsic to all things, and that respect that you're paying to that, it reminded me of when Emily Wari was asked what her work is about, and she's like, the whole lot. That's her answer. Was it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And for me, that is the key to everything. When, when you are asked what a painting is about, and when I look at the monochrome next to the representational and how that feeds into the macro micro, but that monochrome next to it for me is almost an attempt to explain that it is the whole world and that time, past, present, future in Indigenous spirituality is everything. Yeah. And when I look at these, I, I look at the monochrome as an attempt to grapple with the enormous... Yeah, because there's too much, you much can't. easier to say it in, in, without saying it. And language. Um, yeah. like we don't, we language, don't have we language, have language, so yeah. art is a beautiful yeah. way to grapple with the impossibility of representing that. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I love your voids, your yeah. monochromes, because it just reminds me of Emily Warren, who yeah. loves yeah. the kids like. But, yeah. 
There's an artist called John Olson who um, <laughs> heard of. But, um, he used to say um, that, um, you know, that I'm in the landscape and the landscape is in me. Is that how you feel about your relationship with the landscape in a sense? That yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think we all, I think all Australians feel, feel that, that connection. Yeah. Um, anyone I speak to has a very strong connection to the, to the land. Yeah. And all, everyone's, everyone's different in the way that they relate to it. Yeah. Um, but we do all share that. Yeah. I think it is in us. Yeah. Um, and we're not great at talking about it. And that's why it's, it's nice to be able to paint it and start thinking about, okay, yeah. that's one, that's a we, that's a us, that's yeah. we all share. Um, it's funny, when, whenever, whenever I travel and I see a film, an Australian film, if I happen to be in America or London, I get really homesick for that. Um, I remember being in London and um, that, that great movie called Bliss came on as a movie to watch in my movie, in my hotel room. Um, you know, it was written by Peter Carey mm. and, and, and just that sat and that smell of the, you know, the Hawkesbury, the, you know, the, the, you know, the that whole thing of the, um, the Sydney bush, mm. you know, it's, it, it, it really is, I didn't realise how intrinsically part of me, you know, that bush is mm. until I was away from it. Mm. And that um, even though I'm a European Australian, um, that la this landscape has really got inside me more than I realised, mm. you know. And, and I suppose, in a sense, you're you're, you're sort of virtually saying the same thing. Mm. That um, you know th these landscapes are a part of, part of you on on many levels. Mm. 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 Are there any other questions? That, yeah. So there's a massive change from my previous series in terms of like how much light or lack of light. It's almost as if you change um, the time you paint, let's say this way. Um, was that intentional? Was that like a feeling thing? Like it's just a significant change of how you feel or not? Yeah, I suddenly, I suddenly felt comfortable painting dark paintings. For many years, everything was always white mm -hmm. and light. And I think I was trying to paint watercolors, so I thought maybe if I stick to it and paint glass and paint everything light, mm -hmm. um, that was going to be my tonal kind of range. Um, but yeah, I just I, one day I just got hold of some black paint and started seeing what I could do with it. Mm -hmm. And I think it also hit a, for me it was more an acceptance of the fact that of, I'm not necessarily always light, and I do they are very melancholic in a way. And look, dark is a, is, a, is is your friend when you're trying to create a feeling. That's a great practice to say. It is. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Work to the dark, and the light will take care of itself. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, is there any other questions? That, yeah. Yeah. I'd love Jules to talk about the physicality of the work because he's in the yeah. studio next to me yeah. and he, often I can't see him, but he sounds like he's playing a game of basketball. Yeah, and yeah. there's like a lot of physicality that happens to get this stillness. And I just want to know how you manage that, like to get a really still work, but to physically be so, like so much movement and you're a tall guy, no, um. Yeah, that's a good question and only someone that paints next to me can ask. <laughs> um, it's, it's, actually really nice, it's really nice to acknowledge because they do, I, I, they hurt, 